G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, and we're back again for some more pauper action. Um, so of course, playing budget format, here we are, Lotus Petal, nice expensive card right there. Um, in all seriousness, though, that card is very powerful in my opinion in the deck, uh, mostly because opponent's decks do tend to run a fair bit of card advantage, and we're not really going to equal out the value that they're gonna be going for. So in my opinion, uh, one of the best strategies in response is to just race them the best we can. Lotus Petal helps a fair bit with that. Um, it also helps a little bit with our mana base because you can see it's a pretty budgeted mana base with the Ash Perharans at three, the Forest at 12, and the Plains at two. Other forms of mana fixing do include Utopia Sprawl and Abundant Growth. And we've got a usual creature sweep of uh, Glade Cover Scout and Slippery Bogle with playsets and Sohana Ledge Walker as the two. Um, now with the auras, it's mostly standard, but there's a bit of flavor in there. Um, Ethereal Armor, Armadillo Cloak at fours, that's pretty standard. Um, we also have Cartouche of Solidarity at four, usually most lists run three to four. Um, Ancestral Mask at three instead of four. Um, two Sentinel's Eyes to help with that Vigilance effect is actually quite strong. Good plays well into counter magic as well. And last but not least, Satessin Training, no Rancor. I'm gonna be running Satessin Training instead to help mitigate some of the card disadvantage that Lotus Petal brings um, and to help with some of the matches that have lots of enchantment interaction post sideboard. In our sideboard, we have Burn Hate, uh, <laughs> Standard Bearer Hate, Gut Shot, more Standard Bearer Hate, Flaring Pain for a Fog Dex, Young Wolf for a Chainer's Edict Deck, Corsair of Crufix as an answer to uh, Enchantment Interaction um, to reload our hand, and Relic of Progenitus for Graveyard Decks and, you know, the combo decks that use the Graveyard. With that the way, let's get into the leg. Okay, so like a complete full, I left my... Uh, deck list overlay up um, <laughs> while recording the match. So uh, we decided to keep this a seven card hand, a little bit risky because there was no white mana. The two Satessin trainings do give us cantrips to help find our white mana though. Um, given we've got, uh, I guess, 12, source, uh, 12 spells that give us white mana in the deck between the Utopia Sprawl, the Abundant Growth and the um, Lotus Petals, it's very helpful. Uh, plus the five lands that also produce white mana. It gives us like pretty good odds there. Um, so opponent plays Island and passes back to us. All right, we draw Abundant Growth. So we luck out straight off the bat. So we Satess, sorry, we Satess in training here. And that was quite the interesting turn because we ripped the Lotus Petal off the top of the Satess in training. Opponent like hard let the Satess in training Resolve as if they six the turn. So we knew we had the green light to Lotus Petal at the Ethereal Armor and attack our opponent for four. All right, opponent plays that Modern Age, Ghostly Flick of the Grave. So we have a Plains here, and my methodology of thinking is play Armadillo Cloak, attack. Um, it's the same amount of damage if we Satess and Training plus Abundant Growth attack as it is Armadillo Cloak, but this leaves us to uh, potentially draw an extra land, an extra one mana aura next turn, and deal that one extra point of damage. Um, and also play around like a spell pierce. So we attack 27 plays 9. Alright, opponent, Modern Age, discarding Snap, plays Zero's Chancery, and concedes the match. Okay, so this is a Familiar's deck that you can expect to see. Um, the basis of the deck, if you're new here, um, is they have a counter spell suite, they have like an ETB creature suite. Um, Sunscape Familiar makes their blue spells cost one less to play. They can bounce creatures with Ephemerate and Ghostly Flicker. Um, and they're able to just reoccur bounce effects because of this. Um, the main targets for this, Oromancer returning something from the graveyard, Mold Drifter as well. Um, and they can lock us out of the game with Prismatic Strands, which I completely forgot about because once again, it's been a hell of a week. In this sideboard, we expect to see more enchantment interaction. So that's something to board around. Okay, so our initial sideboarding did look like this. A Crufix's Insight into the deck um, and Relic Progenitors. Of course, I forgot about Flaring Pain, so that's a mistake from my end. Uh, we took out two Lotus Petal, two Ancestral Mask, 
I was expecting a little more enchantment interaction, so I figured the Griffix's insight would help mitigate around that. Um, Ancestral Mask isn't amazing to board out because our opponent's modern age does buff it. Um, so there's potential for that card to stay in is what I'm saying. All right, so this match, our opponent Mulligan 2-6. We decided to keep the seven. The Plains was the drawn card for turn. Um, obviously, we have a natural mana here. We have a little bit of interaction, so that's kind of good. And we have some auras that we can resolve, so really good start. Um, so yeah, just Bogle and Pass. I'm not like super excited about trying to get this Relic down under Counter Magic, because then that just exposes Bogle to Counter Magic, and we don't really want that. Our opponent preordains into Azura's Chancery and passes to us. Uh, we find Silhana Ledge Walker, not really a great find. Uh, we take this opportunity to play out our Relic, play out our Cartouche of Solidarity, which does net one more damage, does play, uh, the Sentinel's Eyes plays better into Counter Magic because we can get it back later on. All right, at this point, opponent plays Familiar into Modern Age, passing to us. And I mean, uh, we, we don't have like too many choices here. It's, it's pretty much like play land, abundant growth, Sentinel's Eyes, go from there. All right, so Abundant Growth finds Cartouche of Solidarity, which is actually kind of perfect because it gives us that one extra effect. Um, now, I choose to play a little bit conservative on the Relic here, mostly because I think we can get a little more value out of it. Hopefully we can um, drain our opponent's graveyard a little bit more and actually just exile that one naturally. All right, so with that, we attack our opponent for five damage. They do block the Warrior token and they go down to 15. So. I mean, not an awful spot here, but obviously we don't have any trample activated and there's a bit of ways to go. Opponent with Auromancer into Ephemerate. All right, and that takes us into uh, <laughs> pretty much where I realized that I cut the picture off. So please enjoy the live gameplay from this point. All right, and we can see uh, Prismatic Strands there is uh, discarded to the Modern Age trigger Auromancer. I uh, can return a target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to hand. They're going for Ephemerate off this one, interestingly enough. And let's go ahead and target our opponent down there. Opponent flashing back Prismatic Strands. Uh, choosing green, so we can deal damage with white still. Uh, I mean, our drawers aren't uh, super permitting on that now, are they? Let's uh, float a little bit of red here to scare our opponent about prismatic strands. I guess we should play this guy out there. And then we could attack with warrior tokens, but one will die to Auromancer, so we're not going to do that. All right, so Modern Age flips for our opponent. They've now got the 2-3 Vector. And they cast out Moldrifter, drawing two cards on the Evoke. Femorate on Moldrifter, a uh, sure thing. It's a little bit of juicy value from their end. And Azura's Chancery bouncing the island. All right, well, opponent's done a decent job of stalling us out here. Let's go ahead and target them down a little bit. We find Trample, and that is a pretty damn nice find. Go here, let's test some training. Fresh Barons isn't the great, we can cycle uh, greatest, we can cycle at instant speed, so we'll look to do that in the future. Attacking for five damage here. And rebound on the Ephemerate, going after Auromancer. Uh, it's not the end of the world if they keep this Ephemerate here, in my opinion, so they can get that back to hand. We could Relic in response, but I feel like we could get more use out of this Relic the longer the game goes on. Play Snap on a Warrior token, sure thing. Ephemerate on their guy. What's that, returning Snap? Doesn't seem like something you want to do, but sure. They're gonna have to like discard end of turn unless they dump their hand properly, snap on another warrior token, sure. Sunscape familiar. A deep analysis, drawing two cards. A mold drifter drawing two cards. 
All right, so fairly beefy looking board. Attacking in the air for a couple. I guess this means I have prismatic strands up. Modern Age is played now. Prismatic strands would still cost three to cast, so they're a mana short right now. Discarding Ash Barons here. All right, end step, we will basic land cycle this one away, get our forest, and draw for turn. Not the best of draws. Uh, well, we get in there for five. And no blocks from our opponent. Uh, Bagel's not the best card to play out there, but we'll just do what we can. Alright, here comes Ephemerate. Targeting that Auromancer. Let's target them in response to this one. Ash Baron's into exile. I think we cash this in now. I mean, we could have cashed this in before. Let's go for it now and see what happens. We could get blown up with like a ghostly flicker or another ephemerate. All right, we do fizzle their trigger and uh, of course, draw the bogle. An opponent attacking for six in the air. That's gonna put us down to 10. We got no way of blocking these guys. Modern age now, five cards in hand. They get a loot effect. Uh, mana source has been discarded. Their armor off the top. Okay, well. Let's go ahead and throw this one down, shall we? Well, I mean, that just like hard resolved. That can only mean one thing. Let's go ahead and attack though. There he is, okay. A bit unfortunate. Let's leave this Bogle in hand. We've got like, uh, maybe we should play it out in case they put out some more walls. We've got a lot of damage on the board though. We've got 13 damage, two of the witch tramples. All right, Modern Age triggers from our opponent. Uh, another Vector Glider over there with Summoning Sickness attacking us for six. All right, well, we need to draw exactly Flaring Pain, but we left those in the sideboard because we're a little bit foolish. Ghostly Flicker, sure. So testing training off the top. Let's spin the wheel, see what we find. Uh, opponent with Prohibit. So that's gonna be a concession from us at this point. And apologies, of course it's the prismatic strands we should be considering. Somehow I missed out on our first flick through. Sometimes they also have the um, the rhino, the four mana rhino that makes us skip our combat step. All right, so from our sideboarding before, we did board back in one ancestral mask. So that's one ancestral mask in the sideboard, two in the deck. And we took out one Crefix's insight because they did seem a little bit light on the interaction there. We kept in the relic, we brought in the flaring pain, we're taking out the lotus petal. Um, shouldn't be super relevant here, racing. We'll see what happens. Uh, this hand is pretty damn weak. We get like a 3-3 trample with no backup after that. One card drawer. Uh, I think we can do better. All right, obviously no green mana here, so that's the better we're looking for, right? Uh, and then we have a five card hand with access to no green mana. Man, we are just getting destroyed here. Oh my God, four card with no green mana. All right, to three. <laughs> just, yeah, just one of those games, hey? Bottom one of these, one of these, one of these. Guess we just bottom that. Oh, we have to bottom again. Jesus, man. Guess any creature is better than that. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll uh, just spin the dice on this one. Maybe Ash Baron should have gone back instead of Flaring Pain, or... Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, another mana source off the top, and that's not hugely what we want. I guess I just skipped playing the forest for some reason, but uh, see what happens. Kind of discarding a snap, so we'll cycle our Ash Barons in response to that, getting our planes. All right, well, we couldn't find any mana in our starting hands, but there is plenty of it here. Go team Bogle. Go team Inconsistency. All right, our opponent discards Island this time. Cycles Ash Barons. Uh, plays out their planes. Okay. 
You just know they're holding up that prohibit, hey? Waiting for our creature. All right, so Modern Age flicked into Vector Guider. Opponent gets another island, plays out Azura's chance rate. Two men are up currently. Nice little pop up there for everyone to enjoy because I didn't already click off one of those notifications earlier. And opponent getting in for two, not too surprisingly, currently holding up five mana. Modern Age gets played. Man, we could do with a uh, Modern Age or two right about now. Loot some of this crap out of our hand. Works well with Sentinel's Eyes. Um, I mean, this is purely uh, <laughs> for spitballing for entertainment purposes. It's not actually viable. All right, another island discarded. Preordained from our opponent, gaining that much needed life there. Two cards to the bottom with Preordain. A Sunscape Familiar enters the battlefield. Attacking with Vector Glider. We go to 16. Still got like a definite chance here. Hey look, a creature. Got Prohibit opponent. You son of a gun. Uh, I don't think we realistically wait. Uh, I think that's just not really a winning game plan. All right, opponent's Vector Guider flips, attacks with the other one, leaving their walls back. Five cards in hand currently. Second main, deep analysis, gaining life. All right, another creature off the top would be about perfect. It looks like they're holding up another prohibit though, so might not be the best time for us. Oh, deep analysis on the flashback, paying the three life. Opponent missing their land drop, and here we are, missing our creature drop. How sad. I guess maybe we could have been uh, rewarded by waiting more, one more turn in the vacuum. I guess if, if that was the case, though, they probably would have just had Prohibit in hand, held that up. We would have been in the same predicament. So the Vector Glider's hitting us to 10. Auromancer, uh, Prismatic Strands to the Grave, that's a bit terrifying. Returning Prohibit. All right, well, that's going to be about game on that one, unfortunately. Cartouche of Solidarity can only enchant creatures we control, so uh, we can't enchant our opponent's creature, get a warrior token, and try to beat them down. Well, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to let me know what you thought of that game in the comment section below. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Till next time, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you then.